Good day, everybody. How are you enjoying the LS user meeting 2022? Wonderful, right? Great. Welcome to the tutorial on using computer vision in Python to understand your sample. I'm Daniel Shizima, your instructor in this part of the workshop. The rest of the time, I'm a staff scientist and a member of a camera, one of the centers in the computing sciences division here at Berkeley Lab. I've been here for the past 15 years, and my job, together with my team, is to create algorithms based on computer vision and machine learning to support scientific discovery. Today, you will learn how to process your raw reconstructed data in order to define structures, detect the patterns, and prepare the data before measuring the different phases in your micro CT data. So let's go. Let's get started. To do so, just type this link or use the QR code here on the left side to have access to the Jupyter Notebooks and data that will be used during this tutorial. But what type of user are you? If you have the time to create a NERSC account, then you're gonna follow instructions for number one. If you didn't have that chance, so no problem. You can follow along using Google Collaboratories. And if you don't know how to use the Google Collaboratory, then you can follow along using PDFs. That's how you're going to get the hands on to these things. For those that are going to run uh, the code at NERSC, here is a quick download for the collab and PDF. Those are hyperlinks. And um, another option is just click on uh, these hyperlinks here that will take you directly to a Google Collaboratory. No need to download anything. And what about this tutorial? I divide in six parts. First, is the sample data there? You just reconstruct, am I seeing what I'm supposed to see? Second, can I actually see all the slices that compose my sample? Third, how to see the voxel distribution? I want to understand about the intensities of these voxels. Fourth, well, if the data is bimodal, are there techniques such as thresholding that I could use? How to use that? Fifth, how to downsize or downsample your micro CT so that you can do a few tests before you deploy the full blown cool video, which I'm going to teach you how to do on the sixth part of this tutorial. For those that are going to be running this on NERSC, first go to services, select entry point. You might have done this before. But uh, now you're going to select a different one. In order to do so, you're going to need to create yet again. And then there'll be a drop down, as you've seen before. It's the last one on the list as of right now. The Yushizima Camera Vision 1.2. You go back to the other page. And then you select, I named it Vision. I don't know what you're going to name your entry point, but whatever you did, that corresponds to DU Shizima Camera Vision 1.2. Select that and voila. Let's check is the sample data there. So here we go. This is the first Jupyter Notebook. I am um, logged on Cori and I'll get started. So, first of all, you must have matplotlib inline so that you're going to be able to see uh, the images being. Uh, plot in the Jupyter Notebook. Here I'm running uh, and loading all the libraries that will be necessary. I'm going to be dealing with the NumPy, Matplotlib, and Scikit-Image. These are the three packages necessary to run this particular Jupyter Notebook. That's all I'm going to do. There are options here to do things that using a URL, just in case you weren't able to you know, upload all the data, you can just do that using wget in uh, a few other modifications. I'll go directly and uh, assume that most of you have a NERSC account. So that's what you do. Notice that I'm, I'm using just regular LS and putting this exclamation mark and checking what do I have in my home directory? That's directory. That's what I have. I have my notebooks here. So the data path will need to be for notebooks. Notice I'm going to have one single multi-tiff file called bidpack.tiff and then a folder concrete that has several slices of a concrete sample. 
let's get started with bead pack. So how would you read a TIFF file? In this case, a multi-TIFF file, that's how. It's good practice to understand what do you have there, right? What's the image shape? That's the size of the array that contains your image. It's also valuable to know, you know, the type of data that you're dealing with. In this case, it's uh, two power eight, therefore 256 levels of gray. That's the minimum value for that particular sample to use a combination of psychic image and matplotlib is to take a look at slices individually. And here's one way to go about it. I'm just importing this uh, another library random so that I can choose this slice and see what I have there. And that randomly pick slice 77. Oftentimes you don't have a multi-tiff because these are very big files and uh, it takes a while to load. Might be the case they have a collection of TIFF files. And I'm gonna use yet another library here at Glob to access information within uh, that particular um, folder. I want to use Glob to read all the files. This is reading the file name, not the image itself. So I, ha I have a, an assortment now I'm calling here is license. So I notice that I'm being very careful here, assume that these files are very large, that, you know, it's not that large. I'm just dealing with the 10 files. Let's create this other uh, connection to that those files using a uh, function called image collection. But notice how this is, this is occurring. I'm sending a list of file names in my variable is lists, and I'm saying conserve memory, which means I'm not loading all those images. You are convinced that your data is there. You want to get all these 10 files and put in a single NumPy array, ND array. And that's how you do it. Now you're going to double check. That is the case. Each slice is a two, uh, 2560 by 2560 and 10 slices in terms of the height. And just in case you want to do that, probably that's something that you would have wanted to do at first is to calculate how much uh, is this uh, set of slices in memory. So that's the result. And here, instead of, you know, those loose calls, I'm creating a function. I'm going to call this function load file names. And every time I need a to read a collection of files that is currently on data concrete, that's what I'm going to use. All right, all of them use this extension. It might be the case that yours, your data is going to use, uh, has TIFF with double F. So that's how you change the code to make that work. Again, that same data set. Now I want not to see one slice at a time, but be able to create a montage. In this case, create a montage of three by three of my slices. Because you selected the best ones, you put it in a separate folder perhaps, and you want to see all the slices. And that's the function that you would use Notice that there are different color maps here. It's just Inferno is helpful to basically emphasize a few of the structures that I have in this concrete. You can also concatenate this information to have a full stack. And I'll use yet another library called Plotly in order to create a, uh, a panel that allows me to play my slices as a video. you know how to load the data, right? So here are uh, the histograms of images. I designed a little function so that not only you can see the histogram, but also the slice that corresponds to it. Instead of using a random number, I'm assigned that by hand here. What's the slice I want to take a look? And using this function, I, I have access to that. Um, just want to emphasize here that we're using psychic image, the module exposure, the function histogram. Next, I'm using the image collection to read the whole stack. 
and here to concatenate every in single slice from zero to 10 of that stack. And then plotting the full histogram and you notice that the histogram of the full stack is very similar to this one. What does it mean? That overall, most of the slices must look very similarly to this one, not exactly the same location spatially, but the intensity overall is very similar, which means that probably the distribution of the white speckles, the dark spots here, which correspond to pore, and this other face are very similar. What else can we learn? Here, I've, I'm using this different package called IPI widgets to do something similar to what we did to Plotly. But here I'm designing and I can, for example, put the reading of the imaging inside the function. The only goal of this interface is to do something such as Plotly to go back and forth on this stack. Another function that I designed for you is the slice and update the corresponding histogram. So you understand what, what's the distribution. I see a peak around 50, uh, which probably corresponds to the background here. You see that it's not completely dark, otherwise it would, the peak would be around zero. Uh, and then the part that corresponds to the dense portion of my stack. Another interesting concept is a uh, maximally intensive projection. That's the function that does exactly that. I'm getting, you know, I'm starting this variable here with the first slice. And then I keep comparing and get the maximum over and over again. And I put it here on the side with this color bar to say what's the variation of the intensity values uh, that I have in the maximum intensity projection. Pretty picture. What can I learn out of this? Guess what? You can use a maximum intensity projection as your mask. So you can quickly determine what's inside and outside of your sample. And guess what? I could use this as my region of interest. So sometimes there are you know, a few speckles here and there. One way to do so is to calculate the largest connected component. That's the result. So there are no more speckles here and there, tiny things that were happening before, as you can see. And uh, you can use that as a mask. Lesson four, again, loading the data, yada, yada. Well, let's go directly to the threshold. I load my stack, I select one slice, and I can try a collection of different techniques for thresholding that did exactly what we did in the previous uh, lesson. What's the cutoff that will determine what belongs to foreground and background? That's exactly what these algorithms are doing, but automatically using properties of the histogram. Here at the bottom, I'm using one of them. Suppose I like it, ISO data. It seems that, you know, it's a good idea. You help me to determine, you know, the dense part of my sample and I want to go about it. That's how you use each one of them individually, threshold, underscore, ISO data, yen, triangle, so on and so forth. Remember, when you use this function filters threshold ISO data, which also belongs to a scikit image, it returns the threshold value or the cutoff, which needs to be applied similar to what we did before with the, with the maximum intensive projection to a particular image, right? And that's gonna generate a binary representation, which we keep, we're just showing here at the bottom. Another thing that I'm doing here is to creating this function for you so you can quickly compare what was before and after in changing them you know, to whatever uh, lookup table that you will like. In this case, I'm just using gray. That's the original image and that's the binary representation. And here are a few, tech, few uh, algorithms for, for doing image enhancement. Um, I'm using morphology, also a, fun, a, a module within scikit image package in morphology diamond, just determine the structure element. So my variable here as LM, the structure element, basically it gives the neighborhood that I'm going to consider when I am going to apply this filter 
in this case, a filter of median. So how many pixels around a particular position I'm going to take into account in that median operation to say, well, that's that's the final result, so on and so forth. So you can imagine the largest is the structural element, more blurring you're going to notice in your data. The fun thing about median or the good thing about median is that it's not going to introduce intensity values that are not present in your image. There are other techniques uh, to, uh, to do filtering. Uh, one that is often used is mean bilateral. And there are other filters such as on sharp. Lesson five, downsampling, subsampling. We select a particular slice. When I show the plot lay on the getting start or on the stack overview, I was subsampling, which means that I'm just getting a subset of the sample. So every, in this case, I throw away every other subsamp. Subsamp here is 10. Every other 10, I'm throwing away and showing just portion of the data. See, instead of, you know, uh, two, it was a 2,560, here I'm getting so much less, like a one tenth of the information. Another uh, way to get portions is to go from, so just this bottom part of the original image is to use the index and then column. Here you get portions of data. Here you're actually subsampling. What is downsampling? Well, you can consider that, you know, that's a special case of a downsampling, but downsampling, you can also use functions uh, associated to a certain neighborhood. So every 10, you are not going to go every other 10, but out of those 10 using a uh, something such as an average as part of the process of a combining the pixel values or voxel values. And here's a case in which I'm doing exactly that uh, with this function pyramid reduce, getting the original slice and going downscale 10, but I see that there is, I'm smoothing using our old function for image comparison. Here is the result of just going every other, and here is the result every every other 10, and here is combining the information of those 10 in uh, giving the final result. Another thing that uh, I would like to, uh, to share with you is about image pyramids, and that's how you can have multi-scale representation of your data Okay, finally, we're getting to the 3D visualization and I'm leaving you uh, here a link for all the documentation. There are so many things that you can do using um, ITK widgets. I'm here just uh, using Psychic Image to read the image. You could use uh, you know, uh, ITK for doing that, uh, but because I've used that throughout the, the tutorial, I'm gonna keep this way, you know, read again. Now I'm going to read my bead pack and uh, go for the visualization. It might be the case that when you run the cell with ITK widgets and try to view your sample, you might have a few glitches. First, double check that you have the smiley face here. That's I am joy. That should be enabled for you to have ITK widgets to work. Second, it might be the case that you need to run again and again and once more. So don't give up on the first time. Okay. Another thing is you might need to wait a little bit for the application to run. Another thing is if none of those happening, you wait, you ran it again and nothing happened. You might be the case that you need to run this particular command, which I didn't because I did that before to pip install upgrade pre-ITK. It's running, this is the menu, and there are so many different uh, transformations to that particular image that you can do. For example, you can play with the lookup table. Do you see the bimodal distribution here? Well, it might 
want to align the color distribution to these and how you do, you click plus, put it in here. Well, I want it to cover here. And then I will want another, uh, another little um, bell over there. And I want to get rid of this guy. You know, to do so, notice that I'm going to run up here and then delete. You go to the side, oftentimes as you browse through, do you see uh, the particular bump will get selected. And here is again, uh, how uh, this image is being represented. Well, I can actually make it rotate. You can also use a quick time to record your screen. All right, other things that you can do, you can set planes. So let me stop uh, with the rotation, go to your own side and uh, slide one of the planes and have a glimpse of what's going on inside my stack. Remember, I'm getting this level of interaction because this is a small data set. If you're dealing with a very large data set, you, things are not gonna run as quickly. That's why I taught you how to deal with multi-scale representation. All right, I cannot see well, so what do you do? You just play a little bit here with the opacity uh, so that it's a, a bit clearer how this uh, different planes, uh, what, what's being shown in these different planes. And you can continue playing around here. Right? Um, you can also have view the different planes and stop with all this animation here. Go away. And I sort of have an understanding of what's going on inside of my stack. Did you enjoy the presentation? So don't forget to start out on GitHub. I hope to hear from you soon. Goodbye.